Which you guys, today we're taking a look at the USB toolkit that everyone is talking about, which is from Sergey. Now, this is updated on a regular basis. It has all your tools on here that you're ever going to need to back up, diagnose, and troubleshoot, and basically do date recovery, whatever it is you want to do here. This is the website. It is in Russian here. You can change it to English, and you can go to the download section, and it is updated on a regular basis. And you'll be able to download this WinPE here. And uh, I'll show you basically how to create a bootable USB flash drive. And then we'll take a closer look at it once we've completed all of this. Now, there is other places you can download this as well. And uh, you can download it from other sites, which is like sites like this one, which give you the same access to it. And you can download it from Google Drive and things like that. Just make sure you use the password, which you see on the screen there. And this is the same for if you download it from Sergey's website, because you won't be able to gain access to it until you use that password. So we're going to download Rufus here and create our bootable USB flash drive with uh, uh, Sergey's uh, WinPE on here. So let's go ahead and download the program. You can use the portable version if you wish. Now I'd advise you to get a super fast USB flash drive. That way, once you load up into uh, that flash drive, it's going to be a lot more faster than what it would be if you're using some sort of USB 2.0 flash drive with really slow speeds. This one has 400 MBS, which is pretty fast. There's a bunch of them out there, but it's not that expensive. So I'd go for something like this uh, to boot to, and that way you would have super fast uh, read and write speeds or as fast as you can. You can use external drives as well, if you wish, with NVMe drives in them. These will give you those super fast speeds. So I've got Rufus open now. And what we're going to do is plug in our USB flash drive. You can see it here, 128 gigabytes, plugged into the computer. And we're going to go back to Rufus here. And we're going to set this up so we can create our bootable USB flash drive. So you've got the boot sec selection here. We've also got the select, which we're going to select now and choose our ISO. We're going to unpack the ISO first. You will need to use the password, like I told you here. And the password, which is uh, this one you can see right here, which I'm highlighting right here. This is the password you need to use to unzip the file. So this is the file we're going to be using. It's an ISO file. So we can close off this now and basically use this file for our bootable USB flash drive. So let me go ahead and just quickly highlight that password there. That is the one you need to put in to unzip the actual file and then drag out the ISO file. So let's click select now and we should have our ISO file in our area down here, which is in my downloads. Let me just try and find it and it should be in here somewhere. Uh, there it is right there. So let me just quickly select this one here and we're going to click open and this will then select the ISO file. Now you can choose your partition uh, scheme here. You can either choose GPT or MBR depending on what type of system you're on. If you're on an older system, it will be MBR. If you're on a more modern day computer, it will be GPT. Uh, UEFI, uh, non-CSM is what I'll be using leave the volume name as is. You can use it as FAT32 or NTFS, depending on what you want to set yours as. I'm going to leave this as NTFS. And pretty much once we're done here, we can now click on the start button and this will then start to create our bootable USB flash drive. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It's going to warn you and say the data will be erased on that USB flash drive. I'm going to say that's OK. And it's also going to say uh, about multiple uh, partitions it's going to be needing those. So I'm going to say OK here and let that create that drive for us. Now, make sure you've selected the right drive here because it's important because all the data will be erased on that drive. Now, because of the nature of this type of ISO file that we're using here, you may get false positive flags from your antivirus program telling you there's a virus on there. And you may want to disable that while you're creating your bootable USB flash drive. These sort of things will always uh, flag up false positives. Once you're done with that, you can re-enable your antivirus program and you should be fine. So we're going to boot to this USB flash drive right now and uh, change the boot order to boot to our WinPE made by uh, Sergey. So let's go ahead and boot to this now. You should see the loading files come up on the screen. This is pretty normal. It does take a bit of time to load in. And this is the reason why you want to try to use a really fast USB flash drive. It just makes this whole process a lot more uh, nicer to use. When you're using a really slow USB flash drive, it can take quite a while to load in. So now we're booting into the main screen here. 
and you should see start in WinPE. So this is a pre-installed environment we're booting into here. And this is a great way of accessing someone's computer that's having issues, or you may want to pull data off of that computer or whatever it is you're trying to do. Technicians use these all the time. They're really useful. And you can see we're at the desktop of our WinPE here. So when I click on the actual start button here, there's so much stuff on here that I'm not going to be able to cover everything in here. But if you do want to see some videos on how to use these, I'll be happy to make those videos for you. But you've got backup and restore, hard disk, diagnostics, Windows installation, network, data recovery, formatting, utilities, you know, resetting passwords. Everything is here that you're going to need to troubleshoot, diagnose and fix uh, PCs and PC problems. Now, whether you want to back up uh, data or do some data recovery. Maybe your PC is not booting, but it's powering on, but you're not going to be able to get to the desktop of Windows. You can use something like this as well to uh, gain access to it. It's pretty straightforward. Maybe you've got very limited resources. Something like this is quite useful um, as well for troubleshooting and stuff. So you can see here, there's a ton of stuff on here. I'm not going to go through everything here, but there's a lot of stuff here. And this is just on. Uh, this uh, WinPE here, which we can load up here. So let me just quickly load some of this up so you can see. I'm going to load some of the more common stuff up here, which is Semantic Ghost, which I remember using many, many years ago, but it still actually functions perfectly fine. It's just that uh, they wanted to get rid of this because obviously they want to start charging license fees for backup software and things like that, like Acronis do now. So you can enter this and it will still clone and backup drives just the same as it would with uh, any modern day software and it works perfectly fine. You can go in here and choose disk or partition or whatever it is you're trying to do here. Select disk or image or from image and then make your choices and away you go. You can back up that drive or clone that drive. Once you plug in another drive, it will see them drives and basically clone or back up to it. Very simple. And uh, that was an awesome program back in the day by Semantic which is obviously Norton. Now, another useful tool is MS Dart as well. You've got this built in here and you can go into here and use this uh, toolkit and you can basically registry edit from here. Locksmith, which is resetting passwords on Windows machines. And uh, you can basically do quite a bit. Uninstall any sort of hotfix or update from Windows. Do SFC scans on your system. Wipe the disk. Loads of good stuff from there as well. So it's packed with programs. I'm not going to go through too many of these because there's too many of them here to go through, but pretty much uh, you can use this to reset passwords, backup data, you know, check temperatures of the computer, whatever it is you want to do. There's loads of programs in here that will be very useful for any sort of enthusiast or PC repair tech. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it. And uh, if you want to see more videos on how to use this, to do certain things then let me know in the comment section but i'll be happy to read your comments my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to wish everyone a merry christmas hope you have a lovely time over this festive period and uh, i'll catch you in the very next video just want to say a quick shout out to all my youtube members who join my youtube members group i really do appreciate the support and i will see you in the next one bye for now mm -hmm.